Welcome to today's video. In this tutorial, we will delve into serialization with GOM, a popular object relational mapping library in Go. Specifically, we will explore how to work with serializers using a practical example. Let's get started. Let's briefly understand what is a serializer. In the context of object relational mapping, serializer refers to an extension that allows us to automatically convert struct fields into a specific format like JSON or GOB when interacting with a database. While retrieval, the data is converted back to the corresponding structure. This process is called deserialization. Now using this code, we will understand how serializers work with GORM. First, it starts with defining our product struct. This struct represents a product. Here, the tags field is defined as a slice of strings. The GORM struct tag is used to provide instructions to GORM regarding how to handle this field in the database. This part of the tag indicates that the data type used to store this field in the database should be bytes. This part of the tag specifies that the tags field should be serialized into JSON format before being stored in the database. When data is retrieved from the database, it will be deserialized from JSON back into a slice of strings. The spec field is defined as a map with string keys and interface values. This indicates the GORM should serialize this field into JSON format before storing it in the database. Similarly, when retrieving data, it will deserialize JSON into a map. Here, the spec gob field is also a map with string keys and interface values. In this case, the type part of the tag specifies that the data should be stored as raw bytes in the database. The serializer part of the tag indicates that GORM should use Go's built-in GOB encoding to serialize and deserialize this field. GOB encoding is a binary format used for Go-specific data types. The created time field is defined as an int64, which typically represents Unix timestamps. This suggests that GORM should treat this field as a Unix timestamp for serialization purposes. When storing data, it may convert a human readable timestamp to a Unix timestamp, and when retrieving data, it may convert a Unix timestamp back to a human readable timestamp. This part of the tag indicates that the field should be stored as a database column of type time. These struct tags provide instructions to GORM on how to handle the serialization and storage of specific fields in the database. Depending on the tags used, GORM will perform serialization and deserialization as needed, ensuring that the data can be stored and retrieved in the desired format. In the main function, we establish a database connection using GORM. Here we migrate our database schema. Now let's create some data and store it in the database. We're using a product instance and populating it with information about an Apple iPhone 13. To demonstrate how GORM handles serialization, let's retrieve the data we just stored in the database. We'll query for a product instance with a specific ID. Finally, we print all attributes of the retrieved product to see how serialization works with our data. Let us run the program. All attributes of the retrieved product record are printed. Tags is a list. Spec and spec gob are both maps and are the same. Created time is a Unix timestamp. Now let's see how this record is stored in the database table. The tags column stores the bytes as we have specified in the code. Spec is a JSON. And spec gob is a gob. A thing worth noting is that this data is stored in these formats while retrieving GORM structures the data is specified in the model. And that's it. We've just learned how to work with serializers in GORM. Serialization allows us to store complex data types, such as slices and maps in your database fields. 
This feature can be especially useful when dealing with structured or nested data. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave any questions or comments below. Thanks for watching and happy coding.